Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. We are here right now at the t Downtown Tampa Convention Center in Tampa, Florida for Metricon 2018. I'm Jose Casbona, and sitting next to me is one of the greatest names in <laughs> one of the greatest names in in, in, in uh, oh, stunt work. Kyle Rowling, thank you for joining us. Hey, guys. Welcome. Thank you. How you doing, man? Good. Really good. Yeah. So you've been involved with uh, a lot of things over the years, like mainly, and you're most not noticeably for uh, the Star Wars movies, Episodes mm -hmm. 2, Attack of the Clones, and Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, which, by the way, my personal favorite out of the entire cinematic saga. <laughs> yep. So in uh, Attack of the Clones, uh, I understand that you were involved in w with helping with the fight scene between uh, Count Dooku portrayed by Christopher Lee mm -hmm. and uh, Yoda. What was the biggest challenge? Um, yeah, so I was Christopher Lee's sword double. So okay. anytime you see Dooku fighting, it's actually me with Chris's head imposed on my body. Right. So, okay. yeah. So it wasn't Chris actually doing the fight. God rest his soul. <laughs> it's actually me doing the fight. Um, and that's how I got the gig in the first place. Nick Gillard, the stunt coordinator, was they were mm. filming in Australia, of course, and looking for a tall guy that could use a sword. Now, I'm still only 6'2", and Chris is 6'5". Um, so I had three inch lifts in my boots. Oh, yeah. what a coincidence. Huh? Yeah. I'm 6'5", too. <laughs> you um, can you use a sword, though? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, give, a, give me a bit of practice, you know. <laughs> so the, the toughest part about doing the Yoda fight was that obviously Yoda wasn't there. Yeah, we didn't have a double for Yoda. Um, and I, I do a lot of flippy twirly spins from my Kung Fu days. Yeah, a lot of fancy flippy sp stuff with the sword. And um, that's actually what got me the gig with Nick in the first place, yeah, when Amazing. he saw the flippy twirlies. Um, and so I, we were working on the Yoda fight and, and I was out the back for a couple of hours trying to choreograph something um, that I could run repeatedly and Nick came up and showed me what you got. And I went, no, mate, it's, it's too slow. Yeah, I just want you to get out there and do your flippy twirly crap. All right. No matter how fast you are, the camera and the, the Yoda, the digital guys are going to be faster. So All you right. go, you do the fastest, most insane flippy, flippy, flippy stuff that you can do. Amazing. And um, they'll match Yoda to you later. Uh, okay. So we got there on the day of shoot. We had a space probably as large as this room. All um, right. Um, and there was uh, several chalk marks on the floor mm. where I had to hit that mark. And then that's where they would cut in for Chris's close up. So I had to move from mark one to mark two, doing some flippy twirly stuff, and then hit a pose, and then move to the next mark, and the next mark, and the next mark. Oh, that's, wow. But between each mark, every take, it was different. Because uh -huh. I was just ad-libbing it. And, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, of course. But I hit the same mark every time. That was important. Mm. And so, but Nick was the only one that, that saw that and knew, knew what was going on. And he'd come up to me after every take and goes, nice, mate, nice. Different again, but nice. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well, that's great, man. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so so from the beginning, from the get-go um, of the saga of Kyle Rowling, what, made, what got you interested in wanting to do the stunt work in the first place? Um, look, I, I started acting in martial arts in the same year. Uh, it was 1978. I okay. was an eight-year-old kid. Um, and uh, it was just there were the, the two passions that I had. I, I knew from like before then I wanted to be an actor. Yeah. Uh, and then my two older brothers were in martial arts. And so when I turned eight, I, I started with judo for a couple of years and then moved to traditional Japanese jujitsu with my brothers. Um, and there was always the passion. I was like, yeah, OK, I want to be yeah, this action hero character. Yeah. Um, so did that and kept that dream sort of pushing along for a while but in around 1993 stage combat came to australia for the first time amazing um and when i, I did that workshop and it was this perfect blending of what i wanted to do the acting and the fighting and okay. i was like okay but then something else dawned on me that yeah actors were getting hurt left right and center because they weren't being trained for theater or anything so right. absolutely that's where we that's where my focus then veered towards becoming a fight director to keep other people safe and it wasn't until several years later after that that I thought, no, I really want to be the actor. So I went back to the acting, but kind of missed the window to be the, the action superstar hero. And now I'm sort of the best friend mentor character. Yeah. Hey, you know, <laughs> Edg edging 50 now. So it's a, <laughs> hey, well, that's good. You know, a lot of people appreciate that, you yeah. know, it's especially someone as knowledgeable as yourself. Um, 
You, so it's so it's not just Star Wars that you were all you were no. involved in. You were also involved with other shows. Mm-hmm. My biggest my question is, um, in your years of doing your work with mm-hmm. uh, many projects, um, what was I know? And this is probably a tricky question, but uh, what was one like apart from the Star Wars movies? What was the other piece of work during your projects that you put like that you felt like you put? like your best in, like your million percent in. I wouldn't say 100%. I want to say a million percent. Yeah. Look, <laughs> it, it, it's interesting. Look, I, I do my very best on no matter what I do. Um, it's, it's funny, like the Star Wars. When I first saw episode two at the cinema, I didn't see the Yoda fight because I was so heartbroken at what they'd done in editing to the Dooku versus Anakin and Dooku versus obi-wan fights okay right that is not what we filmed and not how we envisaged it being but that's how it turned out and i was devastated and i was crying my eyes out in the theater i didn't see the yoda fight yeah the first time around and i, I was talking to nick gillard the boss and i was like boss they, they killed me yeah they, they ruined my fight and he said mate it's not your fight yeah george lucas paid you to create a product for him it's his fight and he can do whatever he wants with it. And learning that was a tough lesson, but also a really important one for any actors out there, whether it's your stunt guys, fight choreographers, actors or anything. It's not your role. It's not your bit. Yeah, They pay you the wage to do the job. And they if they want to cut you out completely and leave one line in the movie, that's their right. Yeah, And we can't be precious about our work when we're doing that. No, I understand. Um, so, but... So I give everything that I can, regardless. Yeah, even though I know they could completely ruin the work later. Project that I'm probably the most glad to have been involved with, obviously, look, Star Wars is iconic. But for a different reason, um, I I did some work on Spartacus, the TV series. I was in the first episode of Spartacus as an actor. Finally, that was my first role where I had a, a decent acting role and I got to fight as myself, not make somebody else look good with my fights. Um... And a really dear mate of mine, Andy Whitfield, uh, was the lead. He was Spartacus. Now, mm. Nancy, uh, Andy passed away from cancer you know, a year after we finished filming season one. I was only in the first episode, but um, I think that's the one that resonates with me the most because I got to work with Andy for even one episode. Um, he was just such an in- incredible guy and um, a wonderful talent that will be missed. But to have had that time, you know, training with him, working with him on screen, that's probably the most special role that I've had you know, now that he's gone. No, I understand. And uh, first off, my condolences oh. to the guy. And obviously, you had a, had a wonderful experience. Uh, my final question to you, for any, uh, any of the new blood out there who want to actually try and break into the business to like do stunt work for any projects, whether it's TV shows or mm-hmm. movies or whatnot, do you have any uh, constructive advice to give to them train yeah train hard find good people yeah train with good people there are a lot of people out there that will tell you they're good people so you really got to look dig deep um and know what you want to do yeah uh look i'm an actor first um and then i'm a fight guy uh i do stunts when i'm required to do it it's, i wouldn't call myself a stunt man by any means but you really can only have one profession so I get a lot of kids coming to me at home where I, where I have my training school. I'm like, yeah, I'm an actor, but I, I, I want to do stunts on the side. So when I haven't got any acting work, uh, acting and stunts are both professions that require full-time commitment. You can't do act stunts on the side. You have to be a stunt professional and you have to give it 100%. It doesn't matter what you do in life. You've got to give it 100%. Yeah, if, if, if you um, paint houses, you know, you give it 100%. If you don't want to be painting houses and you want to be in movies, then turn around and give that 100%. I couldn't have said it better myself. That, that was awesome. Thank you very time for your. Thank you very much for your time. You're I'm welcome. sorry. I'm just excited, man. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay easy, man. man. It's okay. Trying to, trying to hold it in myself. But thank you very much, Mr. Kyle Rowling, for joining us. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This is Jose Casbona. And with Kyle Rowling, we are the Ravens Flock, and we are 